Oh, hello. Let's see here. And let's see here. Uh, stream, stream, window. Display. Oh. What the? No, we don't want that. I want that. All right, let's get this here. Display capture. Hey, here we go. Whoop. Well, that's not the right one. How do I change this? No. Come on. How do I change this? Source, windows, we need to change the window. Tweets, no. I want it to be this window. Come on. How do I change the, the goddamn window? Ah, there we go. I'll be darned. And where is my key? Live stream. All right, how do I invite people? Come on, people, how do I invite people? Share, there we go. Aha, is this working? I think this is working. Jeez, how difficult is this thing? All 
All right, is anybody here? Maybe nobody's joined, I don't know. I don't know how this works. Let's see here, is this thing working? Come on, stream. Does this work? Is this working? Anyone here? Hey, hey main account. <laughs> I don't know how this thing works. Maybe I'm screwing this up. I don't know. Cool, can you see the chart? Yeah, you know, with a delay. Let's see here. Might have to do this latency. I apologize because I've never done this before. YouTube says the stream status is good. Well, this is this is fun, I guess. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, we'll tell you what, you know what? If maybe you're the only person who's gonna be here, you got any charts you wanna look at? Let's see here. Oh, this is this is wild. All right, yeah, man, let's do ETH. So you know what? ETH, this is the best I got in TC2000 for Ethereum. But I think it shows pretty good what's going on. We got... Oop. Oh, come on, screen. I understand this. Look at that. Well, Ethereum actually looks looks like it's back in a box right here, but the bigger picture is, is definitely bullish. But you know what? Ethereum hasn't really done a Darvis box uh, setup very good because it's been choppy and been kind of all over the place. You know, came out in April, went up, volatility back down, created another, another box here in the red, and then it rebounded and now it's formed another one. But you know what? It's above the weekly moving average that I use. And on the daily, on Friday, boom. Big green volume and it popped over the moving averages. So I code this when it pops up above and below. The yellow for bullish and white on the bearish one. Because the reason I do that is because there's always a chance 
that these may be more significant days within the box. If you look here on, on Ethereum back here on the 26, it popped above it. And normally I might use an arrow or something like that. Doesn't mean I'm trading it, but it means sit up and take notice. Because when it pops above a moving average, it's on the right side of the moving average. It's on the correct side of the moving average. So it may be the start of a new uptrend. Knock on wood, I don't know. Hey, VAC7, welcome. Took me a little bit to get this stupid thing working. And I hope the delay is not too bad. So hopefully that explains Ethereum. The way I see it box-wise is, yeah, you know what? It's still sideways, but you want to start maybe getting bullish on it again. All right, what else you got? Oh, let's look at the monthly here. Now, monthly doesn't look so good on Ethereum. I mean, uh, excuse me, on the chart. But you can see it's, it's sort of gathering momentum going up on the monthly. Let's see. Remove that. So you can see the monthly is on an uptrend. So yeah, it, Ethereum does not look bad. Do I bother trading IPOs? You know what? IPOs are hard, man. They're definitely hard because, you know, they come out and you don't know how they're going to be treated. And they might have a million shares, a ton of shares, but then the float might only be like 10 million. So the hedge funds can jerk them around and all that. And yet about, you know, when the IPO lockup occurs, then there's 200 million shares available. And at that point, the IPO trend is dead. It's almost like they, they play that. Like, look at Docs. Let's get this on the daily. Docs came out, messed around. There's that potential take notice day on uh, August, uh, August 11th. And then had a nice uptrend. Went from, oh, call it 60s. 60s up to 100. That's a that's a good day. That's a good few couple of weeks, huh? But then look at it now. It's sort of given up and lost all that energy, lost all that momentum. Because it's just a small float. And yet, look up here. TC says it's got 178 million shares. Like, come on, man. That's big and fat. So in that case, reality is probably beginning to take over. The funds had their fun, they made some bucks, and now they're like, okay, yeah, thanks, we're done. So that, that's one of the big problems of IPOs. Hey, Vladi, you, you got a ticker? If you want a ticker, type it in the uh, chat box. So, uh, good shorts? Okay, I put out a lot of charts and they were all bearish because on the weeklies, take a look at the weeklies. Here's the S&P 500. Look at this. We got red volume, green volume, red volume, two to one, red to green. Big institutions are selling. And look, it crossed down. It closed below the weekly moving average. Look at this. The first time it... It's never closed below the weekly moving average since right here, since October of 2020. So it's like, come on, man. In my opinion, that's significant. And it did it on the big red volume. But the trend, this trend is in trouble, in my opinion. And you see it on uh, the QQQs. Big red volume crossed, closed below that. The SMH. And look, the special uh, inside the box coding I've got went off on SMH on the weekly. Big red volume right there. 
what else did I put out? Um, let's look at the, the comp. Oh, ITB. Let's look at ITB. Housing. Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index. Sideways box. Sort of broke down in July, but then they said, no, nope, not yet. <laughs> and that, but now look, it's like came up. Yeah, you know, housing really isn't doing so well. Yeah, it's time to bail on housing. And, and that may be a function of interest rates uh, impacting housing. But look at that. This trend is over. Well, I, I, actually, I take it back. It's over because potentially, knock on wood. Let's see what next week's candle does. If it does like this yellow here and pops back into the box, well then, you know, we're wrong. It's not ready to, it's not ready to come out yet or, or break down yet, but uh, it's sort of knocking on the door. Here's one more that's like short, COVID. <laughs> I tweeted about this earlier in the week when BNTX was right here about 320-ish. Oh, somebody got so angry with me. Um, told me to stick my Darvis box up my ass. <laughs> but look at what it's done since. That, that's crashing. On the weekly, that looks awful. Uh, would you want to be long BNTX at this point? Maybe somebody's interested in this in a bounce trade. But I don't think I'd want to be buying it. I mean, you know, low probability. So in terms of good shorts... Yeah, man, COVID. Moderna, boom, look at that. Volume wasn't as big on mRNA, but it's getting there. NVAX, Ugh, look at that. That's a bad week, huh? Let's look at it inside. Here's where everybody thought everything was cool. And then, whoops. Actually, I should change this to arrow and then barf 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 so covid stuff i'd say are, it would be great short potential shorts all right i'm looking at the uh the requests here uh yeah man big green candles yeah man big green candles that's where it's at look at nvax if i back it up Oh, back it up to the old box, the prior box. Look at that breakout right there. Boom. Big green candle. But ever since then, it's been, yeah, man, I don't know. You know, they're sort of not into it all that much. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. But big green candles, I, I think you take notice of. Big red ones you take notice of. Here's a big green one. And you know, and I can change this coding for the bar. I can just change it back to green. Look at Uber. I tweeted that people should take a look at Uber. Big volume. In fact, let's draw a circle around it. Huge volume bar. And look how big the volume bar was. It's the biggest uh, since March of 2020. So Uber with a great, great big green volume bar. Yeah, man, that that stuff is, is what should make you sit up and take notice. All right, I'm going down the list here. Hood, oh, please. <laughs> really? Come on, man. Um, okay, for Hood, remember my default chart view is is weekly. So here I would look for, I always start with the present and then I go backwards to look for, okay, where am I gonna, where am I gonna draw the box? The thing is, is that the box is not magic. It's just a framing tool, but it, it's, it's you, you use it to get your head around where's the trend, what's the trend here? And right now I can't find any place to start the box. You, you could go here to here that's probably your best one, but maybe you go, maybe you start it here to here, or maybe you go here to here. You know, you come up with your own rules to draw it. I think probably, probably this on hood is how I would draw it. 
But there's no action here. Here, look, there's no big green volume. Inside the box, there's no volume anywhere, except this day here. What day was that? September 22nd. And then look what it's done since. Pop, yeah, man, bullish, we're in it, going back up. No, 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 no. <laughs> so yeah, man, I think hood, I think hood sucks. Unless you're shorting it. If you want a short hood, that, that's probably a great play. PLTR, you know, they announced some sort of news at the, uh, at the close, like they're doing an offering. Here's my problem with PLTR. Up here at the top in the blue, it's got 1.9 billion shares uh, outstanding. That's that's a lot. In fact, that's that's probably too much. So to go up a dollar, they've got to create two billion dollars in market value. Just to go up a dollar, that's kind of tough. So here's the weekly box view. It's stuck in the middle of the box. Eh, drop below the weekly moving average, but you know, is it's really it's really hard to, to come up with something. On the daily, it had that special down bar. And so I draw two lines on it because you know sometimes a big down day, the next bar invalidates it and it goes right back up. So sometimes I'll draw lines across like that. Just to just again, it's like miniature framing. How's this thing doing? based on that one big awful day. And right now, price is still below it. So PLTR is kind of kind of weak, in my opinion. But you know, I'm, I could be wrong, I don't know. Um, I don't have all the answers, but, what, but this is what this does, is it gives a framework to get an idea of what's the trend, are there any spots we can Fine, which might be good spots to trade at. Like here, th this was exciting. August 13th, that week, that was an exciting week. That was earnings, because I put the green arrow here. But since then, eh, are you gonna make any big money here? Eh, not really. So uh, let's see the next one, you got Fubo. Oh man, okay, you want a short? Fubo's your short, but Fubo is impossible uh, at TD Ameritrade. I tried to short it and I got no shares available. Let's get closer in. Here's a daily. You can see it broke the bottom of the box on some red volume right there. Nothing huge though, but this is like a balloon that's slowly losing air in my opinion. It's below the daily, week, uh, the daily moving average. It's had more red bars than green bars since ah, mid-September uh, and volume. And then there's your box structure. Has Fubo done anything exciting? Well, it did here in early August, but um, since then, it's, it's not done anything exciting. So yeah, man, I, I don't I don't really like Fubo, but maybe it turns around, you know, I don't know. Because if big green volume comes in here at the lower edge, oh, that might be a buying spot. Because the, the big guys are saying, yeah, we like it, it's time for Fubo. So, but until that happens, um, you know, it, there's just nothing going on. But but I think I think keep it on your list and pay attention to it. Can I take a fresh look? A uh, fresh stock doesn't yet have pre-drawn. Yeah. Um, let's look at one which, uh, oh here, we'll take one from your other, your other ones. Oh, AMBA. All right, here, I'll take AMBA off. In fact, I'm fine taking off all the drawings off AMBA because I don't need them. Okay, so we got AMBA. It's like, let's take it in. Okay, it, and it's okay in my opinion, you know, look on the, the monthly, look on the weekly, whoop, to get a sense of what's going on. So it had this excitement back in 2015. 
went flat, basically went nowhere for years. One, two, three, four, five, six years. All of a sudden started, started getting interesting again. So the way I do this is I start at the current and I go backwards. Where am I going to draw this thing? Well, there's something in here, maybe here. Um, ah, but then here's the high point. So now I might draw it sort of like this. And the reason why I'm not going all the way down is because this low point right here, that held for a number of weeks afterwards. So to me, that, that's a pretty valid low point. So you could use that. And bang, there's the box right there. It's not a, a science. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's just a tool. It's not magic. But now we got a sense of, okay, there's the range. What's it doing in relation to the moving average, red light, green light? And uh, yeah, and then look at the volume. Volume's a little boring until it got exciting right here on September 3rd that week. I would be willing to bet that that was earnings because usually big moves come on earnings. So I'll give that a preliminary thing like that. And then at this point, I think that's a strong breakout. Amba, strong breakout. All of a sudden something happened and the big boys wanted it. And you know, and my mantra is if the big boys want it, then we should want it too. <laughs> And at least, at least, hopefully, we remember that when price is shooting up, you know, you know, they want it, I want it too. And then because it's gone a couple of weeks after it, then I'll code this as green, because that's a successful one. And now that gives us a control point to utilize for future stuff. So I'll extend the top edge, which is about 130. And now we know if it's, if it's going to go danger zone, if we were lucky to get in at 130, great. Now we can measure its progress. If we got in at the close, well, there's your control point. Maybe you buy here and stop loss here. Or maybe you do really tight and then look to rebuy it back if it comes down here. So there's different ways you can play it. If you're chasing up here at 163, you're, you're gonna get shaken baked because it's gone one, two, three, four weeks. And yeah, you're late, man. I, if I was buying here, I would be so late. We deserve to lose money if we were buying here. <laughs> we should just write checks to the brokerage firms. Yeah, here, take my, shut up and take my money. But in the longer term trend, Amber looks great, man. And look at the daily here. It's still above the daily moving average. I'll bet you this thing, even if the market goes down, this thing probably just goes sideways. But this is one you want on your watch list. In fact, I'm going to add this. Uh, I'll put this here. Uh, let's see here. Amba. So we just did Amba. Odell. Hey, Lindsay Law. Law Lindsay. What's happening? Oh, Dell. All right, Dell, man, this one's, this one's tough, but maybe it's starting something new here. Uh, let's take a look. Because it's a large cap, hasn't done much. You know, it's only $79 billion market cap. It's not like a small cap. So let's take a look at the monthly. Oh, monthly's exciting. In fact, time to have gotten interesting is down here, maybe in 2020. On the monthly, it's a nice trend. So now let's go to the weekly. What do we want to do with this thing? All right, well, that weekly moving average looks pretty strong. Every time it violates it, it pops back up. So there's a guardrail for you on any law. Now let's try and box this thing up. Uh, back to here, there's maybe a small one there, but since there's a larger pattern, Maybe from up here. 
And now here you go, you, the farther back you go, and I'll go roughly here, aha. Look at that. So now you've got a box pattern. Look at the volume. Boom, there's your breakout volume, big volume there. And look at, look at this here. That is a failure attempt. It tried to go up to the top. And for whatever reason, it said no dice. And look what's missing. It doesn't have the big green volume. Uh, no wonder it failed. Because it just didn't have enough power behind it. So it failed there. You keep it on your watch list. This was a little scary right here as it popped back down. But then, like I was saying, you know, give it a week, see what happens. The next week, the big institution said, in fact, look at this, they're almost apologizing. Like, whoops, sorry, sorry, we, we weren't looking when this happened. <laughs> and then they bought it right back up. And uh, it's almost like Fidelity was like, 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 sorry, our guy was out that day sick. But we'll make it up and, uh, and go back up. No, this is TC2000 software. Not trading view. I've used TC2000 for years and years and years, so I never saw fit to switch. TC2000 is pretty cheap. Um, I can't imagine using anything else. They've got pretty good scanning software. Uh, there's scanners, you know, different types of scanning. Once you learn, once you learn different scans, like show me what's above average volume. Show me, show me, um, uh, let's see here. You know, what's crossing on, on big volume? And it scans fast. Uh, you just, it takes a little bit to learn the scanning language, but TC2000 support. Sometimes I will email them and ask them questions. Hey, I'm searching for this parameter. Uh, but what's the language? And literally they'll send you the code you need. So that's really handy. So back to Dell. Look at Dell. I think Dell's looking fantastic. And you know what? Don't worry about the S&P 500 dropping uh, on this because Dell's going up. Dell don't care. Man, we don't care. So it's stocks first and then indexes second. If your stock is doing really well, then forget about the index. Dell here, now, you, now you've got a frame of reference on the daily. And that's a nice uptrend. And it's only up a few bucks. 101 to 105. Yeah, that might continue to do really well. It's not, it's not too far off from uh, the pivot. So yeah, why not go long? Uh, yeah, TC2000, yeah, they got silver, gold, platinum. I, I use gold, and it's pretty cheap. It, uh, uh, it's like 500, 600 bucks for two years. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pretty good deal. And I don't know anybody who's ever, um, who really ever uses plat all the platinum features. Gold has been enough for me for years, so. But, uh, so there, there's Dell. Oh, all right, let's look. I'm looking at the stuff. Uh, let's back up a, a tad. LLNW. What the heck is this? Never heard of LLNW. <laughs> Come on, man, where'd you get this one? So does this look like it's worth buying? No. Yeah, uh, okay. So you know what? I haven't done as thorough look, but let's, let's talk also here. Where's the big green volume? There isn't any. Red, 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 red. So in my opinion, LLL, 
L L N W. Um, there's nothing going on here. So I, I would cross it off your list. BCRX. All right, this one looks kind of interesting, but problem is it's already had a nice move here. So let's uh, box this up, maybe like here to here, or maybe we got to go a little further back. Yeah, probably a little further back. Something like that. So after I've drawn this, this uh, box on that, does that look bullish to you guys? Eh, not really. It's missing green volume. It's pounding downwards from the box structure. It's not going upwards. And now it looks like it's completely failed it. Uh, in my opinion, BCRX is just, it, it's not worth a long at this moment. But, and, and you know, I see it's a biotech. Biotechs are really hard because they're always doing secondaries. The science is always questionable. You know, people die. Um, uh, the results come out in phase one, phase two, phase three. It takes forever for these biotechs to get products out there. And many times, they, many times the products fail. Biotech, it, it, literally, you'll pull your eyes out and scream. So uh, I, I always try and avoid um, biotech. But that's, uh, that's my view on BCRX. You want to see one biotech, which is looking good, and I've been thinking of buying it? ISEE. -E. I think you could agree, in comparison to BCRX, ISEE, -E. this one is pretty bullish, huh? Box breakout here. Now, I do not own this, but I noticed it. I, I, I was told about it here, up here, like 13s and 14s. And all I can think of is, how did I miss this thing? But that's okay. You know, we miss stuff all the time. I mean, all the time. I'm always coming across stocks that have ripped and had amazing structures. And, you know, we just completely missed it. But look at this. Came out of the first box structure here. Back in July, looks great. Formed another one. And then monster volume. Look at that. That's a monster. And ever since then, it's come out. But look at this bar here. Open in the week, mid bar. Closed in the week, mid bar. Maybe running out of gas here at the moment. Or maybe just needs more sideways box action. And the distance between the weekly moving average and here, that, that, that's pretty pretty far so maybe it pulls back into the moving average pulls back into the moving average and that's your buy your buy spot would be right here maybe 14 if we're lucky but there's nothing wrong with this one there's no big red volume nobody's given up on it so if you do want to play with biotech there's one for your list Hey, Richard, what's happening, my man? Managed to get this thing working. This thing's hard. But streaming, finally figured it out. It took me about 10 minutes. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking at the comments. Oh, Upstart. Ha ha. Upstart's just a monster. So look at this, look at this on the box structures. First box down here after IPO. And remember I talked a little earlier, when IPOs come out, man, it's just, you just don't know. You don't know if they're gonna, if they, you know, where they're gonna push it around to. It's got small floats. It went up to 100. It doubled in five weeks, six weeks, went to 100, then gave it all back. Then had the earnings report, boom! It doubled overnight. But then you know what? It's like, yeah, we're still not sure. Formed another box. I traded it from down here from 
the low of this box here. Can you see lows and volume can sometimes be really good buy spots. And I traded it up to, up to about here. So I made like 60 points or whatever. And then it went sideways. And then, and, it, and all it did was bump along the bottom of the box. I tried it in here multiple times and I just couldn't get it to stick. And then boom, it took off and left me in the dust. So, but if you got this one, this is a huge winner. And it was a box breakout here. You see that box breakout structure? You get the range, then if it blows out of it, then you get your control point, which is roughly the top. And then you can evaluate it from there. And upstart here, just monster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I, I would say upstart has more in the gas tank, but just maybe not right now. Because look here, you got the moving average. And this, this zone here needs to fill a little bit. So maybe it does like ISEE and it comes down. And maybe it comes down into the moving average. But that's your, and that's where the buy is. That's, a, that's as good a guess as any. But yeah, man, upstart is strong. But, it, but it's not so strong where if things turn down, it's not immune. So maybe you, maybe you punched out up here and then you look to buy it back down here, maybe. I don't know. One day at a time. Here's a daily look. Yeah, you can see all this trash down here. Ah, this was so tough down in here. But then once it got going, oh man, that's been super strong. But yeah, now it broke my, my daily moving average on some volume. So maybe that's saying it's going to take a sideways break now. All right, let's see here. What's next? Net. Another huge winner. All right, so remember, take the whole trend. What's going on? On the monthly, it looks just fantastic uptrend. I knew about it from down here way back in January and then this, here, let's back up a little. Right from the beginning, box structure, then the breakout. But this is right around COVID, where everything crashed. So it came up here at 21, came down to 15, then finally recovered. But nobody knew what the stock was. But it was above the weekly moving average. And then finally, as more and more people got into it, yeah, it started moving. Box breakout structure right there. What's interesting is right here, it did not have the traditional look. But it was still going up. So yeah, you know, you could buy it and see what happens. And it turned out to be a pretty good buy. But then you got into this this other box here and you had to judge it. You might've been shaken out in this zone here along the bottom. But since then it, you know, it went back up again. But if you were a longer termer, maybe you just say, oh, I'm just going to use the moving average. You know, that's one way to play it. But the problem with, with net now is just, it's got a $35 billion market cap. It's come a long way. It probably could use a rest. Time to have been buying it was down here at 15. It's gone up 100 points. So it wouldn't surprise me uh, to go to, to form another box structure and go sideways for a bit and then figure itself out. And here's one thing I also look at this uh, number of weeks uptrend. From, from each one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It went up 15 weeks. Typically, 12 weeks is on average, you know, the length of it. 12 weeks equals three months. So that's one quarter. So it'll go up for a quarter and then rest for a quarter. 
Look here at the prior uptrend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve on the button. Strong trends go further than 12, but it's rare if they go a lot longer. So when you get to 12 weeks, you better start getting a little nervous. I do. Let me show you one more thing about the 12 weeks. S&P 500. Break it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it peaked week 11, week 12, it started moving down. And this, this stuff happens all the time. So you get going on a trend that's three months, man, people, money's burning a hole in people's pockets. You know, the market says, yeah, we gotta take some money out of people's pockets. Keep them in the game. All right, the next one was Fastly. God, this one's a total disappointment. I made money on Fastly and this whole garbage part here, I avoided completely. I made money up in around in here, this, this zone. Cause it came out here and it did, it did not have a box structure or anything when it came out. They just came out with earnings and blasted off. In fact, nobody was looking at this one, nobody. And then it blasted off. I uh, got talked about huge, but then I don't know if you guys have heard the cancel them term wide and loose. But this here is wide and loose. Avoid wide and loose. <laughs> and yeah, I know a lot of people who got screwed on this on the gap down here. Um, That's really unfortunate. But ever since then, it's just this one's so hard. And if you read about the company, they're just, they're just a total management mess. Their CEOs have no idea what they're doing. The sales teams are demoralized and they don't know what they're doing. And yet people say it's got a good product. So probably it needs a new CEO to come in. And the day that happens, we'll probably get a big upwards bar and that'll be the new buy, buy trend. But until then, Fastly is just an avoid. There's just nothing going on. There's no green volume whatsoever, nothing. All right, M MDB, my, my keepsake. God, I love this one. And this one, you can see I've been on this one. I've known about this one since IPL because it came out MDB and I'm like, oh, that's my stock. Did I buy it and own it the whole way? No, I screwed that up. You screw up all the time. When new people, when new people come on Twitter and say, "Hey, I'm new. Can you help me out?" I'm always like, "Welcome to hell," because <laughs> you can't be perfect, and you you miss a lot. But the current look on MDB is great. It formed this giant. What is that like? Four twenty-four, all the way down to two fifty. So 170 point range box. It's like, good, good Lord. But it came out with the earnings and look at that, just boom, came out. And ever since then, yeah, you can even call this a, new, a potential new one as well right there. So the big institutions love it, but volatile, totally volatile. I can't handle this one. Uh, it's too hard, and if I screw up, it'll cost me too much money. This is the one, and if you notice, uh, Whale Rock, the Alex Sacerdote guy, who's a successful hedge fund manager who's owned this for a long time, he, he's long it from like, I don't know, down here. So he just sits on his ass and rides it and let, just lets it go. And he hasn't added more, but he hasn't sold any either. So this is all just the crazy managers who didn't buy it way earlier. And they're throwing around other people's money. So too hard for my money, but yeah, you know, if some institution gives you a billion dollars, yeah, sure, slam it into MDB. If it works, you're, you're a genius. But yeah, as you can see, I've tracked MDB a long time, but it's, it's just too hard for me. So, some stocks are just too damn hard, man. 
What's that next one? Oh, SI. This, this may be the new one we want, we all want to own. And this one gave me so many freaking headaches earlier. Okay, so I previously had SI. I got rid of all the prior stuff. I traded SI down here from like, call it, call it 65 or so. I forget when I was buying it. I was buying it somewhere in here, right before it's earnings still. And then I wrote it up to here and I sold it uh, about 160 or so. And this was wild and crazy, wild and crazy trading up here. Let's see, maybe do I have it on the daily? Uh, I didn't, I, I removed my marks, but it was somewhere up in here. And I was selling it in here because it was just getting too wild and crazy. And then I tried it a few times in this junk in here, but man, nothing stuck. And then, uh, and then I saw here on the weekly. So remember when you take in something, you're looking at the big picture. What's the big picture? The big picture says these two giant volume weekly bars are important. But then it went, it went super quiet after that. And, uh, but for some reason, big institutions piled in here around the $90, $90 level. And you know, you gotta assume, are these guys smart money? Yeah, I thought so. I tried it in this zone in here. And here you can see all my headaches. I thought this earnings right here was where it was gonna start. And man, this is the beginning of the new uptrend. SI is gonna rock, uh, Bitcoin's taking off. It's gonna be awesome, baby. So I was buying in here and you could just see, it just had no power. You know, came back down, sold it. No, it's, it's back, buy it again. Yeah, it goes back up, then yeah, coming back down. I mean, just torture. But now I do not have SI and, I, and I, I'm kicking myself. I should have bought it here because this is where they got that uh, story in the, I think the Wall Street Journal or something. And it was talking about how great it is. And there's on the daily, there's that coding of the yellow that, it, that it's a day to maybe pay attention to. And since then, it's really beginning to move. And look at this, big volume, big green volume bar. It's the biggest since the earnings where I first got excited about it. And now it's looking like on the weekly, yeah, man, maybe we'll want to take this back to 170. And look here, first big green volume bar since the big green volume back in May. So this is telling you that, you know, buyers are interested. The bigger guys are getting interested in this. The question is how to get into it safely uh, to trade it. That's a whole nother, another ball of wax. If you missed it down here, and remember, I'm not in this. If you missed this here, here's probably how you, how you got to do it. There's no box structure because boxes structure is a weekly thing. Maybe you draw a mini, miniature one. Something like this, perhaps. And there's your structure. So yeah, buy it Friday. It, it, you might say, oh, this is too already too extended to buy. No, -uh. not if you're using a structure, uh, putting a structure to this. You take it roughly here, your stop is maybe like 126, with a decent chance you get stopped. But if, it, if you don't get stopped, then this could be a winning spot. Remember, we could still be in the beginning. So that, that's my opinion of SI. And I'll tell you, when there is a huge box range, yeah, then, I, then it does pay. I will draw mini boxes in here. You know, maybe something like this. Look at that range. That may be the more correct range to interpret this. Because if we code this green, now we see a traditional box breakout structure. 
We got the range. We got the breakout. Yeah, man. Put SI on your buy list. Try and figure out a way to get into it. Uh -uh. Figure out a way to get into it safely. <laughs> this stupid thing. God, it, it made my life hell during, during those uh, daily trades. All right. Anybody got anything else? I'm looking at the, uh, the comments here. Anybody got any other stocks they want to look at? But that, as you can see, this is kind of the flavor of how I do my thing with the, the Darvis box method. I don't know. I don't know where the right trade is in here. So let's get a structure on it. Let's understand this and then look for positive change. And that's how I do it for looking for longs. The opposite of you look for negative change. That's like BNTX. You got a box structure, it's beginning to fade, it starts looking sick, and all of a sudden, you know, barfs its way downward. So uh, people have different tools and methods that they use. This is how I developed mine because uh, I really struggled with like Canslim and other strategies. Um, the only strategy I think I would choose if I did not use this homegrown Darvis box method, I think I would use the strat. But the strat is a little more short term and I like to sit and sort of hold stuff. So this is how I created my own little system that works for me. Uh, let's see, oh, hey Vladi, uh, path. Oh, this one's just a nightmare. Is there anything bullish or green on this? Mm, nope. Look at that. Big red volume because it barfed its earnings. There's no real box structures I see here because it's still downtrending. You know, you need some sideways. You could sort of call this maybe a box, but I like to see more green bars. So to me, path is just, it's still going lower. They, they had its earnings, and instead of buying it, all the big guys want to do is sell it. So until big green volume comes in uh, to turn path around, this one looks like a no. ADAP. Uh, what's ADAP? Oh, another bio. Man, you love the bios, don't you? <laughs> I know a guy who's plugged in with biotech managers and stuff. They're all either loving life or they all want to jump off their balconies. Welcome to biotech. Um, God, this one's just hard. Look at that. I don't even, I don't even yeah, you love pain. <laughs> I, I don't even want to box this one up. <laughs> it's just too hard, but look here. Green volume. Yeah, jump off the balcony. Green volume, green volume. So something may be up here, but it's just it's just wild. Um, let's look at the monthly. Yeah, the monthly. This one's really hard. I would say avoid a ADAP. Oh, NCNL. Here we go. I only started tracking this one real recently. And I got, uh, you see, it came IPO, did nothing. Then it went into this garbage range along here. Then it finally busted it downwards and it still looked like garbage until something happened here in September at its earnings. And it looks like institutions may be giving it another chance. Like, hey, maybe there's something here, you know? Oh, you know, I kind of like that report, buy some. Uh, but is it super duper exciting? Well, maybe. And look, you see, there's your control point of the, of the, of the red line, the failure. It's sort of teasing with the failure. Maybe this is a good buy point, but it's a little hard to tell. But it doesn't look awful. If you did try it, give it a tight stop or maybe stop out at the weekly moving average, I guess. I don't know. But that's how it looks to me using the Darvis box um, method. But most likely, 
Here's my best guess. Most likely it forms another box like this, and maybe that's the breakout you want. That gets a second dose of news, and you buy the breakout through 80, and you give up on it from 70 to 80. I don't know. So that's my opinion there. Hey, aloha. What time is it? Oh, it's 8 o'clock. So anybody got a couple more charts they want to do? But but that's that's kind of the uh, the Darvis box method, how I interpret it. And as I told you at the beginning, I'm getting kind of kind of bearish because again, of these weekly moving average closes below them on big volume. But yeah, maybe it takes a couple more weeks. We'll see. The buyers on Friday really saved the index's butts right now. But with other stuff looking not so good, you know, who knows? It's Maybe it's just a matter of time. Hey, Richard, uh, how am I handling the current market? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to follow energy, but I don't really like energy all that much because energy's been so hard to trade. And that's why I put on Twitter, like, okay, everybody, what are your favorite tickers? Because I need to build a watch list. And... Even though Richard we might screen for energy names, you know, with RS and everything, sometimes the Twitter, uh, sometimes Twitter has even better names. But um, like SD, but then I look at them and I'm like, ah, oh, look how much this has taken off. SD, AR. Shouldn't we have all been buying this at four bucks? We'd have a five bagger right now. Made five times our money. What were we thinking buying technology? God, we're dumb. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Here's another one, CPE. I know some people are, are trading this one, CEI, which I've had some people tell me is a complete fraud, but, you know, you can make money trading frauds. Doesn't matter. But let me show you the one I did buy. I did buy BTU. I'll get rid of that to make it clear. And the reason I bought BTU the other day was because it's got a box structure in a box, but then I put it to the daily. And on the day I looked at it, the daily gave me a moving average trigger signal. And I can action off of this signal. So basically, when I noticed it, when I ran my scan, it was literally like right here. And I'm like, aha, I can buy this and use the moving average as a control point. You know, I can, I can get some decent, uh, control my risk pretty, pretty well right off the bat. And, uh, and historically, if it moves up the next day, then chances are this, you know, we might have stumbled at the beginnings of a winner because it's starting to get on the correct side of the moving averages. Compare this opportunity with AR. How, where are we going to get into AR? I, I have no clue. Uh, there's no defined structure we can use to get into AR to buy it. But with BTU, it was showing me this right then and there as soon as I looked at it. So I bought some BTU. And I'm long right, literally like right there. And so far, knock, knock on wood, that's a good start. So, but energy, I think, is, is the place going forward. Here's XLE. XLE, look at this. Big breakout here. It tried to come out in this zone here, out of it. But, yeah, where's the big green volume? All, you, all it got was sellers. Every time a... Every time the, the longs push price up, the sellers smacked him in the face and said, absolutely not. But then it got its act together. And then look here, the last, uh, last three weeks, all of a sudden, everybody's realizing there's an energy crisis brewing, which means time to get long energy. And there's your big volume box breakout. So yeah, man, energy may be the sector to be in going forward. Possibly. 
But energy can be hard. Uh, what, what you got there? UNG? Yeah. Natural gas. Natural gas, man. That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> I know future traders, future traders call it the widow maker for a reason. But look at this candle. It's run from 11 to 19 for a commodity. That's amazing. But look at that weekly candle. That doesn't look so good. But maybe it keeps pushing higher. If there is a crisis, it'll push higher. But there's no box structures or anything. It just, it came down, went into the gutter. And then all of a sudden, they're like, ah, oh, maybe it shouldn't be in the gutter anymore. And you know what? Uh, the one which nobody's mentioned, uranium. Uranium in the gutter for years. And all of a sudden, some smart people started started crunching the numbers and all of a sudden the spreadsheet started saying yeah there's a problem here and went up and then whatever reason this downtrend is i don't know but the downtrend simply creates a box structure uh, something that we can frame and get our hands around what's going on and it came out of the box right here uh, went up and then probably went a little too hot but to me uranium looks like it's you know, getting its feet under it. And the uptrend might continue there. And this is an ETF. I have no idea what's even in this ETF. Do you guys know what's in it? I, I sure don't. Uh, oh, Disney. <laughs> Getting out of energy here for a second. Okay, Disney. Eh. So we need to box this up. So again, I start from the current and start going backwards. Like, I would start here, but yeah, you know, there's more to go. So start going backwards. Maybe there, but let's get the larger picture. Keep going backwards. Probably start here. This one probably needs a few mini boxes. Like here. Uh, go up to here. And remember, Darvis would use the very tippy topmost. Whereas I try and use more, some, a lot more times I use the weekly closes um, for that. But that looks sort of roughly like that. And then it's really a jumble in here. So yeah, I'd probably call it like this. But again, drawing boxes is simply what rules do you want to use to draw them? <clears throat> Disney doesn't look very exciting. <clears throat> volumes kind of low. Where's the big volume bars? I don't see them. I see red. I see a little bit of green. I don't think Disney's telling us that it's time for Disney right now. When the volume bars get to be this high, then it's probably time for Disney. So that's my opinion there. Uh, B... T-E-G-F. Ah, oh, look at that. Never heard of this one, but man, that's that's pretty pretty bullish. Last three last three weeks. So let's box this one up. This one's easy. You can use the high, the recent highs, high to low. And there's your box structure right there. We'll coat it green because it's already well out of it. Did it have the volume? Why, yes, it did. And man, when you get volume, 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 volume from the breakout, yeah, this one's going to be a winner. How high it goes, I have no clue. But but when you get when you get three three straight weeks of volume bars at the breakout, you know which had it last. You know which which one had that? Asana Software right here and those are huge bars and look where it went it went from 42 to 120 so b tag f maybe triple so maybe you're looking at a six six dollar maybe you're looking at six bucks maybe let's be conservative four to six 
That's my best guess. I don't know. If things get crazy in December, who knows? But that's how, how uh, I'll frame a new name. You want to get your hands around it and uh, see if there's any structure to it. And then how can we take advantage of it if it's looking pretty good? So I think I probably would treat this as, ah, I missed it. But since it looks good, let's put it on the, on the watch list. And if it pulls back, you know, maybe, maybe to the moving average. Yeah, maybe we want to buy some of that. So that's my thought there. All right, look at the time. It's 8.10. We've been doing this about an hour. So uh, you guys got any other questions or anything? I hope, I hope you've been enjoy enjoying doing the charts and seeing how I do uh, my box stuff. I, I personally think that Nicholas Darvis was a genius because he did this back in like the 1960s and he was traveling all, all over the world. It's amazing, amazing story. All right, any other questions or charts at this point? Last call. Hey, Dan, sorry, man, we're wrapping it up. <laughs> I apologize, Dan. Hey, Dan, you got a chart? We're about to wrap up. Let's do a chart. You just got here. Hit me with a chart. Rail. Oh, CLDX. Yeah, we'll do that one too. All right, let's do CLDX, then we'll do rail, and then we'll wrap. All right, check this out on CLDX. For some reason, I started drawing boxes down here, and then I lost interest in this for whatever reason. Maybe because I learned it was a biotech um, or for some reason. It probably was because it had this gigantic volume and it hit my scanners. And when gigantic volume hits, yeah, man, we want to sit up and take notice. Something's going on. Uh, and so I, I bet you I started tracking it, but then, you know, tech stocks took off and I lost all, all interest. But as you can see, losing interest was a mistake. Because look at this, look at this trend. It's followed the weekly moving average. It's now uh, a five bagger. And you only had a little bit of grief back here in uh, April. Otherwise you could just follow the moving average up on this. So let's shorten this a little bit. Oh, and there's that box breakout structure again. And Here's what's amazing. This volume bar on the breakout is big enough to be seen even in relation to that gigantic one. So let's, yeah, look at that. Whatever happened right there, got it going. And now it's just a matter of, of writing it up. You might want to box up some, you know, I, I would have created, yeah, there's, there's another green volume bar. Green volume is so important. If your chart doesn't have green volume, man, man, just don't, don't be interested. And the, the more huge, the better. The more huge the green volume and the, and the absence of big red, uh, big red volume bars. So there's another one. Oh yeah, there's that tough zone right there. Probably call it something like that. There's your green volume again. And ever since there, it's been going up really nicely. And, and look here, no new boxes since, since uh, July. That's an impressive uptrend, CLDX. Good call if you bought it. Yeah, you know, green volume, I consider it. I just make it easy. 
I, all, I simply say, say green volume means they were buying. Red volume means they were selling. That's it. So I try to keep it really easy. But CLDX, I think you got a winner, man. All right, let's look at rail, and then we'll, we'll wrap. Rail. Okay, Dan, like I've told people, when I get a new ticker, um, <clears throat> you want to look at it, maybe scroll out to really get a sense of what's going on. You know, structure, volume, all that kind of stuff. My default is weekly. <clears throat> and on the weekly chart, you can see green volume, green volume, green volume, etc. There's no big red volume, which is nice to see. So they, they wanted it several times. But the structure is a little is a little loopy. So maybe we'll look at it on the monthly. Oh, OK, when we zoom out on the monthly, that doesn't look so hot. But maybe it's got some action going, because look here. This is the only part where it's had volume. All right, so let's go back to the weekly. And with any new box, start at the beginning. Try and go backwards to box it up. And boy, this is all wide and loose up in here. So maybe you start, you go farther back. All right, here, here's where I can do, this is where I can find the clearest spot right there. And there's that box breakout there. And then it gets really freaky. Um, ah, call it up to here. I'll use the weekly close. So I'd call it like this. Probably something like that. Because that this gives it enough structure to understand, okay, what's going on with this thing? Yeah, you know, basically that's a big sideways range. They really wigged out on it from six to eight bucks. But look, it gets, it gets a lot more calm below five. There's no big red volume down here. And if this is our structure, I, I would almost think that this thing might be getting ready to go back up into the box zone, but it's sort of, it's sort of waiting for the go signal. The fact that it's below this, eh, give it another, another week. Literally, I'll bet you this thing pops back up. The low here is 477. Bet you it pops back up. Use 477 as your control point. Buy it there, and you could set a stop of, you know, any of these, any of these ones down in here. And I'll bet you if if that goes back up, then maybe it might uptrend again. But it's hard to say. It, yeah, demand for rail cars. It's hard to say, but it's not crashing but it's not shooting upwards either. It's almost like it's just waiting for something. Time. But so looking, uh, just putting this together, like I, I've said this earlier, to the, earlier tonight, the box is not a magic thing. It's just a framing tool to understand the market structure of what's going on in the stock, in the chart. And now that we've got a box structure here, we can get it, we can try and understand, understand it a little better. And if it gets another big green bar, yeah, man, maybe you might have a winner here. But right now it's not, it's not saying anything either way. So yeah, man, it's an odd bird. <laughs> Where'd you get this one? All right, guys. Well, uh, I think we should wrap it up so that we all have uh, can get on with other stuff. But I thought it would be a lot of fun to do like a live stream. I've never done this before. And it took me a little bit to figure it out at the beginning. But um, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and see how, how this little strategy I've created. It's pretty unique. And yet, I think it's also fairly commonsensical, too. Um, 
And yeah, you know, maybe you've learned a, a few things. And uh, if you have, you know, shoot me a nice note on Twitter or something. So I'll try and do more of these in the future as I figure out the technology. And uh, we'll get it, get it fun. Uh, uh, it would be really cool if you guys could talk. And have, we can do some conversations. So uh, maybe we'll try and figure that out in the future. So anyways, I hope everybody has a good night. And I'll talk to you later.